Welcome to the Marketplace Network and Pastoring God's Sheep. I'm your host this evening, Apostle Timothy, and my very special guest this evening is Dr. Chet. Doctor, I appreciate you coming on with me tonight. Thank you for inviting me, Apostle Timothy. I really appreciate it. I thought tonight we would talk about friendship. Okay. Something that some people are confused about, exactly what a friendship is and what it's meant to be. So according to Oxford American Dictionary, friendship is a person with whom one enjoys mutual affection and regard. My definition of friendship is someone who knows your flaws and likes you anyway. Oh, I like that. Say someone, that again. Your, de your definition. My definition of friendship is someone who knows your flaws and likes you anyway. Someone who, when you make a wrong turn in your life, gently guides you back onto the right path. Yes, some worldly friendships have this trait, but I'm talking about a godly friendship. I'm talking about a friendship that is made with agape love. Dr. Chet? Yeah, that's really good. I like that definition. Of course, I like Timothy going off of script. I think he does his best work when he's off script. And so I really liked your definition there. Um, yeah, and I think we should talk about the two Greek words for love. It could probably also be translated friendship that is in our Bible. And yet we don't have the nuances in our English translation. Agape is used mostly for God's love, which is an unconditional love, meaning it's given with no expectation of anything in return. And then there's another one that is uh, a different type of love that's a conditional love. So, yeah, really the love that uh, the Lord is looking for from us is agape love. You know, without that type of love, and God didn't God, God even gave us a command, a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. We are to love each other. Amen. Now, I have had friendships in my past, and man, many of them to where it was okay, we're friends, but what have you done for me lately? That's not a friendship. That is how am I going to be able to use you today? It's like, oh, you know, what have you done for me lately? You know, it, and it's, oh, you don't have, you can't do anything for me today. You can't give anything to me today. Okay, bye. You're useless. Why am I even hanging around with you? You can't do something for me. That's not a friendship. A friendship is somebody, and I had actually had a young friend teach this to me. A true friendship is someone that simply wants to have a meal with you wants to keep you company when you're out running errands, is willing to listen to you talk and let you know that you're going to be okay. That's the type of friendship that we're, I'm talking about here tonight. Dr. Chet? Yeah, that's really good. Um, I have a friend that went through some very hard places, and unfortunately... Sometimes that's the only time we get to find out who our true friends are. 
he has a saying, I really like it. And you're talking about one of three friends that he talks about. The lowest type of friend is a friend for a reason. There's a reason why they're a friend with us. Once the reason's gone, they're gone. Exactly. It's like, oh, you know, in some cases, it's like, who can you introduce me to that I can date? You know, uh, oh, nobody. Okay, bye. You know, maybe you can find, maybe you'll find someone for me tomorrow. Or, you know, you got $20 I can borrow. I need to, uh, or I want to go to the movies and I don't have money for gas to put in the gas tank. Oh, you don't have 20? Well, bye. Maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah. That's the type of friendships for the most part that I've had throughout my life. I've been really lucky. I feel to where I've actually had fr true friendships, the number of which I can count on one hand, hmm. who my true friends have been throughout my life. I can count them on one hand. Yes. Dr. Ken and Bishop Dominic are two of them. Oh. I know you got something to say. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, I totally agree with you. The friends that we have, true friends, friends for life, there's not a lot that we can really count. And they're gems in our in our lives. They're true blessings. You know, it's interesting in Proverbs 18, 24, it says, a man of many companions come to ruin. But there's a friend who sticks closer to uh, than a brother. That's the ESV. The NIV kind of puts it a little different. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. And unfortunately, you don't find out who those people are until circumstances happen. When everything's going great, usually you don't find out who these people are. But these ones who have unreliable friends and we can have them too in our lives. And we may or may not know it until the circumstances present, present themselves to know that they're unreliable. Uh, they bring ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Absolutely. And, you know, my yeah. brother would say blood is thicker than water, but I will say this, that I probably have friends that stick closer than even my blood brother. And that's a true blessing. This is this is very true. And I've had those friends. Now I've had no I had an older brother. He passed away a number of years ago uh because he refused to quit smoking. And I would give him a bad time about that, uh, only as a little brother can do. But uh <laughs> you know, he would he would tell me that he wants to quit smoking, but can't. So I would tell him, you know, Larry, it's mind over matter being able to quit. It's simply mind over matter. And since you don't have a mind, it shouldn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, nicotine is probably one of the most addictive things out there. So I know it's difficult for people to quit smoking. For us in the body... Us being the temple of God, 1 Corinthians 3.16, we have to think about things even beyond the spiritual into the natural, being the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we really should try to take care of ourselves if we can. This is true. But I find it interesting that you would use that last scripture that you used, because I actually had that written down oh, okay. for, the, for this show. So... <laughs> I stole your thunder. No, you just, it was just a good time. You had a good time to put it in there and uh, you used it and that's great. Right. One of the other scriptures that I have is Proverbs 27, verse six. Wounds from a sincere friend are better than kisses from many enemies. I love that one. And there are friends that 
you're going to be wounded by, not necessarily intentionally, but they might wound you by bringing something to your attention that you're doing or that you need to do and are refusing to do that you don't want to hear. And in doing so, they're causing a certain type of pain uh, to you at the moment. I totally agree with that. I think, you know, we as friends, if you have true friends, I think we should be able to frankly exchange uh, thoughts with one another. You know, if we really love somebody, we're willing to put it our friendship down on the line for their good. And, you know, we want to speak in love, truth and love. That's important. And we are and we need to frame our words correctly. But there are times where we have friends and we're afraid that they may be headed towards danger or doing something that could harm themselves or harm others or just not good for them in their lives. And because we care so much, we want to we want to say something to them. And I appreciate that when people do that for me, especially when I know that they're my friend and I can trust them. Absolutely. Now, I've got a friend that has been my actually been my friend for 50 years i met him over in the philippines in 1970 and we still remain friends and still communicate with each other matter of fact he called me today just to check up on me and see how i was doing that's the type of true friendship one that actually lasts like that that is good. And he's been there for me. I've been, I can pick up the phone and talk to him whenever I need to. You know, if there's something wrong, something that's bothering me, I know I can call him. I've got a cousin who is also a friend to me. He's older, but from the time, you know, from childhood, I've always been able to turn to him no matter what. And which makes him more than just a cousin in my book. It makes him a true friend as well. Because he would listen to me and he would help me to correct whatever the situation was. So that friendship, the friendship can actually be a family member. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think these friendships for life and these friends that are willing to go through whatever we're going through are so important in our lives. And the body of Christ needs to get on board with this. You know, my pastor, I don't like to do shameless plugs, but my pastor up here in five, his name is du uh, Pastor Dwayne Wolf, just had a wonderful message this last Sunday on how we have this mentality in the body that we're on this individual walk with God. We're not on an individual walk with God. We're a part of the body. And so he shares in this message how important it is for us to view that and how our lives can affect people positively or negatively within the body. We win as the body we lose as the body. That's why we're supposed to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Um, and if somebody's messing up in the body, you know, I hope that we could have a relationship where we could talk frankly with one another to get things straightened out. We can look at Miriam and her sin against her brother, it held up the whole train of Israel moving forward. And that sin of Achan, same thing. The whole, all of Israel suffered from it because of a hidden sin. And so we in the body need to understand that it's not an individual thing. Our lives are interconnected and we need to interconnect with one another even if we rub each other the wrong way at times, we're all and a part we will, of the body. As friends, you will. 
Yeah, we will. And we get right back to this agape love that you're talking about. Jesus says that we as his disciples would be known by one characteristic other than other sects of Judaism, Second Temple Judaisms of the day. His sect, the people of the way, would be known by their agape love. Exactly. Now, on the other end of that scale are the ones that just want to use you. And an example of that is, you know that I went to prison for a period of time. And I did, I went because I foolishly allowed a, quote, friend talk me into doing armed robberies. Oh, my goodness. It was at a time where I was weak. I had just lost my mom. And I just didn't, at the time, mentally, I didn't care. But that friend, so-called friend, was just using me. And as soon as I told him that I wasn't going to do any more, that the one that we were getting ready to do that night was going to be my last one, he set me up to be arrested. He actually called 911 and told them where they could find me. So that is a friend that just, so-called friend that's just using you for what he can get from you. Well, let's drill into this a little bit because I think some of our audience okay, well, can maybe we're, we're relate. Running, to we're, this. we're just we're running short on time, so if you can uh, go into it just a, briefly, uh, I'll ask you to pray us out. Yeah. So I think there's people out there. I know there's people out there that are trying to fit in. They're trying to find love in all the wrong places. And sometimes when we have people that seem to care, that seem to want us to fit in, and you're in a weak spot like you were talking about, Timothy, where you're just, you're grasping at something and there was something to hold on there where you thought that you had fit in and this guy really cared about you. We see this with gang activity. And these people that have terrible family lives, they the these gangs will welcome them in and they think that that's love, when in reality, they're going to get the same response eventually that you got with your friend. Exactly. That ended, but, you ended up in prison with. It was after, not... After that transpired, people think, I, you know, people thought I was crazy at the time, but I actually forgave them. I don't trust him. I won't deal with him anymore but i did forgive him which is something that god wants you know wants us to do yes doesn't mean you trust the person but it means you give you know you forgive them what for what they did to you and my understanding of forgiveness you're not doing it for the other person you're forgiving them for yourself right and forgiveness can and most likely is separate from re restoring what you did have in the past. Exactly. And so but you can, can you forgive pray, somebody. Can you pray us out? Yes. We're, yes. we're at so that we can... we're at that moment where we just oh, we gotta pray. Boy. Dr. Ken and Bishop are on us, so we better pray it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Father, for you out there that uh, I hope you've enjoyed this program on friendship. Now, in the body, we really should be focusing on friendship. And there's wrong types of friendships out there. So we want to pray that God would give you the discernment for the right kind of friendships. Because there's friendships for a reason. There's friendships for a season. And there's friendships for life. And we want friendships for life for you. That's how it should be in the body of Messiah. So, Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for this message that, and what was on Apostle Timothy's heart today, Lord. And we want to ask and pray that you help give all of us discernment. Give us a new level of sensitivity to, to feel and discern out there who is really a friend for life 
not a friend or a reason. And Lord, put us into healthy relationships, I pray. And we in the body, Lord, help us to grow in our love for one another, that we would actually come to a place where we can actually lay down our lives for one another. And Father, give us a mindset to esteem one another greater than ourselves, Lord. Father, we ask for this in Jesus' name. For those that have been wounded, Lord, by so-called friends out there that were not friends, Father, we just want to pray healing on them right now. Father, we ask that you would release your healing upon them right now in Jesus' name. Begin to heal their hearts, heal their souls, and bring restoration, God, Father, we ask for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. This has been Pastoring Sheep and Mark the Marketplace Network. Dr. Chet, I appreciate you being on with me. I look forward to having you as my guest again in the future. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. And until next time, have a blessed day.